What's up everybody, Matt Nuzzo hanging out here at Real, and today we're gonna to talk about the anatomy of a foil. When you look into foiling, you're just getting the foiling, it is so confusing. You go to a brand page and there's like all these parts and pieces, and it's just really hard to understand kind of what's what, so we're gonna go over the basics of what the anatomy of a foil is. We got one flipped upside down here because this is how you actually build your foil onto your board. Can be confusing for people when they're talking about a foil because the foil goes up, down, which way is the foil section, all these different things. We're gonna go over the really most basic parts and pieces of this foil. First, we're gonna start with the mast. The mast is the vertical part that connects it to the board. With the mast, there's a variety of different sizes ranging from about 110 centimeters down to 45 centimeters. So that's a huge range in foils. Most are in the average size is about the 80 centimeter length. Most of the times masts are measured in centimeters. Some companies do it in inches, pretty easy to do a Google conversion to make them equal. The shorter the mass, the easier it is to foil and the less dangerous because with that mass being really short, it's hard to get on foil and stay on foil without breaching, but you don't have these hot angles. The longer the mass, the easier it is to ride through chop and bump and stuff like that, but it definitely has a lot more throw side to side and you do those crazy wipeouts called tacos or other things that you might've heard of. Next piece is going to be the fuselage. Fuselage is the part right here that connects the front and the back wing. Fuselage is different per brand. Here with the Armstrong setup, in a lot of setups, it's fuselage is one separate piece. With F1, Lyft, Code, some of the other brands, the fuselage is part of the front wing and back wing together. But the fuselage, just like on an airplane, is that main thing that connects the front and the back wing. The length of the fuselage is gonna dictate how much stability the foil has. A longer fuselage, like we have here on this kit, is gonna give you a lot more stability. Shorter fuselage, like we have over here, is gonna give less stability, but faster turning. Next thing is gonna be your front wing. This is your planing surface and lift. So front wings come in a variety of sizes and shapes. The curved part here is gonna be on the top, just like you see here. This is how your foil is going through the water. Curved parts right here on the top. Final piece of a foil is going to be the tail wing, also known as a stabilizer. Tail wing has a few different names, tail wing, back wing stabilizer and it does exactly that it stabilizes the front wing it also provides you with some additional lift tail wings come in a huge variety of sizes and shapes which have more lift and stability for beginning and then smaller ones will be faster and turnier and then the shape the foil section all these different things will change that we like to think of tail wings like fins on a surfboard that you can dramatically change how a surfboard rides just by changing the tail wing so that's a basic overview of hydrofoils if you want to come and learn more, come and join us at Real Water Sports. We've got a great lesson instructional program, great wing camps, kite camps, foil camps, everything for you to get out there on the water and learn how to go hydrofoil. Reach out online, realwatersports.com, and give us a call at the shop, 252-987-6000. See you guys in the water for the next session.